Yeah. Probably talk about the movie. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So a couple of nights. So have you seen it yet? Yes. Yes. You have. Okay. So what? Uh, what are you excited for an audience to see? What's is there a scene that you're, you're that stands out? I just really want to see uh, the uh, uh, feel the audience reaction watching the movie because I watched it alone as did you. Yeah, which uh, is which is nice. You know. It's nice, but it'll be lovely to see see it and kind of feel mm-hmm. feel it. Uh, with an audience, yeah. Because well, there's always going to be lights and shades, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Um, it's whether whether I was laughing at the right moments when I was watching it on my own. Which is generally, unfortunately, when I come on uh, to the screen. Um, but no, there are, I, it's nice to. See, I think. That, I think you can feel when an audience is moved. Mm. Um, and so it's kind of knowing. It's kind of working out whether you, you share the same thoughts as somebody else. I don't know. When you have a character with a duality, I don't want to give anything away. Is it easier? Is it is it more fun for you as a performer to know that you have to hide that in the background for the first half of the movie, or do you, would you rather go in with not knowing? No, I think I, I prefer to know. I think mm. it's because uh, it, sometimes, you know, especially I do a TV show as well, so sometimes you find something out about your character that you think, I probably should have known that six episodes <laughs> ago. Uh, yep. So that can, that can, it can kind of be hindered. So I, I much prefer to know, and it, it, it automatically influences how you play certain things. I was watching an interview with you this morning, um, and you said the bravest actors you see make very strong choices in relation to their performance. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering what choices you guys made for these characters. Wow. It's really interesting. I mean, I suppose in some ways, there was, you know, you do, you do, your, you do your research. I and mean, I felt quite happy, but tied to the material. Really. I didn't feel like I had some, a huge amount of room to, mm. and I didn't want to, to embellish upon somebody who was already an amalgam of certain, I, th- I think, other characters that were working there. So he wasn't one specific. Mm. He was a real person, but I think he was doing a multitude of different jobs that were done by other people within the context of the film. Mm. Um, but the choices that I made, I suppose, uh, just smoke as much... Well, Morton made the choice that I should be smoking as much Everything. as possible to give aut- authenticity to the era. Are you a smoker? I, I'm now on the electrics, but um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> solely, I think, because of that experience. <laughs> oh, good, it's six in the morning. Yeah. I think as well... <laughs> There's a certain responsibility you have when you play someone real or someone who's or a character who's based on, 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 yeah. on real people. So you can't really have the you don't have the freedom to to maybe take such grand big jumps that you normally would when when you're playing someone fictional. And there wasn't a lot of material that we could actually look up because yeah. a lot of the records have been destroyed mm-hmm. and and a lot of the people who are involved and still around, of which there are very few who are working at Bletchley, are completely tight-lipped about it, even mm-hmm. though they're in their 90s, so they, they won't talk about it, which is thrilling, although slightly annoying. <laughs> um, yeah. But what was, I suppose, what you know, I don't know, I felt like we, we did our work and a lot of our stuff is quite reactionary to what's yes, going on with yeah, Alan yeah. and what Benedict was doing, and you know, talk about strong choices, he made some, some very strong choices, which I think I, I did see coming from the script, but I think what was great is when someone plays a character who... And there's always an element to when you do something where you want to be on the, on, you know, if it's a difficult character, to be likeable, to play something that's likeable. And mm. I think what's great about what Benedict did was actually to, to show that I'm not here to be liked. And, you know, he's a puzzle. And, like, he didn't, he makes him difficult to like at certain points throughout the film. We go on a similar journey as to our characters, mm. I think, trying to go, well, who is this guy? Why is he so arrogant? You know, mm. and eventually we all end up on the same page. And we were lucky enough, we had a, two weeks of rehearsals which made a huge difference mm. I've been able to watch every actor I felt very lucky to sit in that room with, with Matthew with Benedict and, and with Matthew Beard and, and Kira towards the end and really get a sense of you know how the actors were developing their characters it was really, yeah. really special all very different as well mm. all yeah. very fluid from, from day one which is really nice yeah. I'd love to keep talking about that I gotta let you go so we do something called five questions five quick questions okay. one word answers wow. one word answers one word script or improv script improv stage or screen stage screen Lennon or McCartney? Lennon. Lennon. Hitchcock or Kubrick? Hitchcock. Hitchcock. In one word, the imitation game. Cumberbatch. <laughs> <laughs> Turing. It's a big one there. This is a big one. It's a big, it's a bigger word as I can get. Um, oh, I went Turing. Turing. Turing's better. Thanks. I think all... all <laughs> <laughs> Alan. That way. It's yeah. a double, double move. Thank you so much, man. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Totally just need that microphone.